Hello, my name is Lillian Podlock and I'm a software developer with Flurry. Today I'm very excited to demo an application which combines the power of zero knowledge proofs with the immutability and the security of Flurry. This video is designed as a companion to the blog post that I have linked below. I highly recommend that uh, folks read the blog post before they look at the video because the blog post talks about what zero knowledge proofs are as well as uh, the intuition and really walking through um, walking through the circuits and every, really everything. This video is just a very, very quick walkthrough so you can see the app running and also if you have any issues getting it started up, um, you might find your solutions in this video. But for you know, a, really a, a deeper dive, the blog post is recommended. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to make sure that my um, I have Flurry slash Legal Phishing the repo downloaded onto my machine. So the link is below in the description, but what you'll wanna do is you'll just wanna git pull and then the that link, and that will download it onto your machine. And now I'm inside of that folder, and I will want to npm install, and then I'd press enter to issue this command, which I won't do here, because I already have the dependencies installed. But what this command will do is it's going to just install all of the dependencies in my package.json. And that will generate a node modules folder. Weird. All right, and now um, I can also take a look at what else I have in here. I have a seed folder, which has my schema, which will be loading onto a Flurry database, as well as my seed data, which will also be loading onto the database. And then I have a source, which contains my app.js, you know, all of the items I need for the React part of my app. And then I also have a circuits folder. So your circuits folder might look a little different than mine, um, but my I've deleted some of the items in my circuits folder so you can see me generate those items. But what, what I wanna look at right now is my circuit. So this circuit is called inauthorized range and I create the template for my circuit and then I specify that this is what I will want to compile. And what this circuit does is it takes three inputs. It takes a, a latitude range, a longitude range, and a fishing location, and it'll spit out an output, which will be zero um, if the, my fishing location is not within the legal range, or a one if it is within the legal range. These two inputs, the latitude range and the longitude range, are public, so anyone will be able to see these, which is what we want. But my phishing location is my secret information. I don't want to give that up. And so that's private. And that will never be shared, will never be put on Flurry. Um, I can throw it away if I want to when I'm done, uh, when I'm done creating my proof. But that, that's really the heart of this app is that you know, this is some secret information that I can prove is within, this, in, within these ranges, but I don't have to share it with anyone. So what I'll want to do is I'll want to first make sure that I have circom installed globally. So I can just do npm install slash d circom. And now I'll go into, and you'll press enter, of course. Um, I've just already have this stuff installed. And now I'll go into my circuits folder. And I can see, you know, this is what I have in there. I have inrange.circom and I have input.json. And what I want to do is I want to compile my circuit. So I'll do um, circum in range dot circum dash o for output in range dot json. So this will take this circuit and it'll spit out an in range dot json, which has a whole lot of information that's not um, that we won't we will, we don't need to go through. But now um, I also want to make sure that I have snarkjs installed globally. And both of these are really awesome J JavaScript libraries for working with zero knowledge proofs that are put out by iden3. So a lot of um, what I'm doing here, you can find in their documentation and in a video that they've done. So I just wanna make sure that I have that installed. And now I can set up my circuit. So I'll do snarkjs, set up, and then my circuit, I've given it a special name, so I have to name it again in range.json. And what this setup does is it will create a proving key and a verification key. 
And as the name suggests, the proven key is the key that I'll need in order to prove that my secret location is within the given range. And the verification key is the key you'll need to verify anyone else's, anyone's proofs. You can verify your own proofs with it, but more importantly, you'll be able to verify other people in the network's proofs that they've put on the database with this verification key. Um, in the blog post, I've talked about this a little bit more, but this part of the process, the setup, also creates some toxic data that has to be deleted. So in this case, we've never saved it. Um, but if you're thinking about you know, using this in production, there's ways to get around this, or at least make this a little more secure. But um, again, read, read the blog post. Um, and, or, or talk to us a little bit about it, and we can, we can talk a little bit more. But anyways, um, the next thing that I need to do is I need to create an input.json. And this input has all my three inputs that I'll be putting into the circuit. So it has a latitude range, a longitude range, and a fishing location. And so as I've said a million times now, <laughs> these two are public, right? They will be shared with everyone and everyone everyone and anyone, and my phishing location is private, so this will never be shared with anyone again, so I can delete this if I want, or this, I said again, but this will never be shared with anyone, right, so my phishing location is within my latitude and longitude range, so I can see 20 is between 20 and 21, and uh, 180 is between 176 and 190, and note these, these need to be positive numbers, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate a witness. And what this does is it calculates every single um, input and every single intermediate signal as well as every single output for the circuit. And this is also information that we need to calculate, but we never share with anyone. So I'm going to do snarkjs calculate witness dash c for circuit in range.json. And you can see that this calculates a witness.json, which includes um, all of our inputs, whether they're public or private, as well as all these zeros and ones are intermediate uh, signals in our circuit. And now I can finally create my proof, snarkjs proof. And this will generate my proof in a second. So here's my proof. And it's uh, not, not a huge, but not a small JSON object with a bunch of information, and also public.json, which is only my public inputs. And now, if I have a verification key, which I do, and I have a proof, and I have a public.json, I can run snark.js verify, and this will verify that a proof is valid. So this will take a few seconds, but um, once it's done, it'll either tell me invalid if the proof is invalid, or OK if the proof is OK. So thankfully, my proof is OK. Um, and now what I want to do is I want to actually get this up and running and integrated with a Flurry database. So I'm going to go over here. I have a second terminal up. And I have a Flurry version 0.11.5 downloaded. And I recommend if you don't already have something open that this is the version you download. Um, if you look at, if you use a different version, some stuff might be different. Um, but what's nice is I can just do uh, flurry start.sh, and this will start up Flurry uh, on localhost uh, local port 8080, which is the exact port that we need to run with this application. Um, if you're using a different version, your default port might be 8090 or might be different. Um, and so you'll, need, you'll just need to change that. So again, just for simplicity's sake, that's why I recommend you using the same version as me. And now we can go to localhost 8080, and I'm going to create a database. And this database is going to be called Legal Phishing. And again, all of this is hard coded in my sample app. So you'll just want to make sure that your port is the same as my port, and your name, the name of your database, is the same as the name of my database, which is Legal Phishing. So I'm going to create this. And then I'm going to go over to Flurry QL. And I'm going to issue some transactions. So I'm going to first create my schema. And my schema has two collections. One is the snark config, and the other is the proof. 
and you know, this is hashed and does all the usual things that a Flurry transaction does. And now I'm going to input my seed data. So my seed data has a circuit, it has a verification key, and it has a proving key. Uh, for simplicity's sake, at least the first time you run through this, I recommend you just copying and pasting this transaction. Um, but if you want to try using your own uh, proving key and verification key that you generated, uh, you can just copy and paste that here. But make sure to be very careful. As you can see, these are kind of long. And um, if you even exclude a single key value pair, then your uh, proofs and your verifications won't work. So uh, for simplicity's sake, I suggest you just copy, copy what I have. And now I've added this in. And you can see that this is a single snark config with the ID legal phishing. And again, this is all hard coded into our app, so just make sure that your snark config has an ID of legal phishing, otherwise things won't connect. All right, and now we can create, or we can start up our React app. So I need to be in my legal phishing um, directory. I need to make sure, uh, again, I, I've npm installed all of my dependencies, and now I can just do npm start, and this will start up my React app, and we can get this all connected. So it's loading, and here we go. And this has a little reminder for you saying, you know, make sure that you have the database running, make sure the database has the information it needs, because otherwise it will not work. And so in this first page, we can click on generate proof and we can create our custom legal phishing zone. So you can drag and drop this, you know, put it wherever you want. If you've left this page open for a while, you might have to refresh. Again, this is a very simple demo app. It's not uh, production quality by any means. So just refresh if, if the page has been sitting open for a while to make sure that uh, this part works. So now I've created a legal phishing zone and I need to create my secret phishing location. So the X coordinate for my secret phishing location has to, between, has to be between 53 and 99. So I'm gonna specify 70. And my um, Y coordinates have to be between one and 51. So I'm gonna do uh, 42. And you can see as soon as I have a valid phishing location, then the app will allow me to generate a new proof and also this uh, little input box is green. So now I generate a proof. And this proof, we at this point we can throw away our secret phishing location if we want to because the only thing that we have to put onto the ledger is the proof and the public signals. And I'm gonna submit this proof. And this says proof successfully submitted. Go to verify proofs to see all submitted proofs. So all of our proofs are here. We only have one. So I'm just going to very quickly create a, yep, like I said, uh, it's a not quite production quality. So I'm just going to refresh the page so that this part works again. And I'm going to create a legal zone that's kind of tiny. And my fishing, the secret fishing location is zero, zero. I'm going to generate a new proof, and I'm going to submit this proof. I'm going to go to verify proofs, and now I have two proofs there. And if I actually queried my Flurry database, you can see not only the, pu um, the public signals, so the top left corner and the bottom right corner, but you can actually see you know, the instant it was submitted and the proof itself. The app, in the app, we don't display the proof just because it's long. But the only pieces of information for every proof are these three pieces. And the instant isn't necessary, it's just um, for ease of access. But, and also in our, in our, I should mention, in our Flurry metadata, you can see who submitted this proof and when they submitted it. But now we can go here and the only thing we need is the circuit and the verification key and the, the proof. And we can just click verify and this will take a few seconds, but we can verify anyone's proof. Um, so what's really cool about this is that the proofs are going to be sitting on the Flurry ledger and any member of the network can both see you know, when those proofs were put on, who put the, on, those proofs on, and they can verify those proofs as many times as they want. You know, if, if they wanna have a policy that they verify proofs every hour for some reason, 
um, they can do that, right? So you have all the information there to verify your proofs. And you can also see the history of your verification key. You can make sure that that's never been tampered with. Um, so it's a, this app is just a very, very simple um, combination of zero knowledge proofs and a flurry. And I think, but I think it, it holds a lot of promise for how you can combine these two technologies in the future. And again, for anyone interested in diving into more detail, if you didn't heed my warning at the beginning, I highly recommend you looking at the blog post because that goes into a lot more detail. Um, yeah, so please leave any comments, any uh, feedback below, and thank you all for watching.